Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is a video on topic number four um, about timing analysis. Uh, the objective of this uh, short video is to show how to do timing analysis uh, using Vivado tool. Uh, so uh, we want to do timing analysis in order to find the timing most critical part, uh, essentially the longest delay between any input and any output of our um, circuit, of our top level design entity. The example that we'll look at is the 4-bit adder, uh, which you can use to actually extend it to a 32-bit adder that is one of the components that you have to, to do in your project number two. Uh, the, the source files, the VHDL files of this uh, example, um, are included in the uh, zip archive that I shared with you on uh, D2L. And, uh, the main steps that we'll go through uh, will be to create a new project uh, without a test bench file. This is for the purpose of uh, synthesis and implementation, targeting an FPGA device that we have on the basis uh, 3 FPGA board only for the purpose of, of uh, having a target FPGA device in order to get more accurate uh, timing results. Uh, we'll add to the project the VHDR source files. We'll create an edit the constraints file, uh, which we need to have uh, the tool connect the input and output pins of the top level design entity that is the 4-bit adder to the actual pins of the FPGA chip uh, that would be connected on the actual board to a slide switches and um, LEDs um, and then we'll run synthesis and, and uh, implementation we'll uh, just take a look at the timing report I'll show you the simplest way to find out the uh, longest uh, critical path delay in this uh, circuit I have here uh, some additional uh, resources that you may want to, to check out if you are interested in learning more about how to do timing analysis. So let me just go and uh, create a uh, folder called uh, 4-bit uh, other as the folder that I will create the new project. Uh, I'll bring there the 4-bit other VHDL as well as the full other VHDL. So this is the directory, uh, the folder for bit other where I'll create a new project, a Vivado project. So I'll go and say project new. Uh, I will create it in that location that I just specified. Um, the project name is for bit underscore other it's an RTL project we mostly use those default options I will add those two source files that, that we have for the other and for other we'll keep it as a VHDL uh, I will create the constraints file later on uh, now as a target uh, FPGA device I will use from the Vivado tutorial that PDF We'll copy and paste the name of um, the actual FPGA chip that we have on the board. Uh, so I'll find it quickly there. Uh, I'll select it, I'll say next, and then I will finish. You see here the summary at an RTX S7, and, and uh, um, that is the actual FPGA chip. The project is created. The next step will be to create the constraints file before we uh, go ahead and do. Uh, Synthesis and uh, synthesis and the implementation. So we won't need to do any simulation, nothing like that. I just wanted to create a constraints file. Create file. I'll call it for bit underscore adder. Uh, underscore constraints. I'll keep the extension XDC the default one. Okay, uh, it should be created, but empty as you see. Um, and I will bring with copy and paste from a, uh, uh, an example of, of a constraints file that I'll share on uh, D2L as well together with this video. Um,
save it. So I have created that constraints file for a, a say piece of information. You should be aware that it is created under the folder or the project is uh, called for beat underscore added that SRCS sources and the constraints one new and you'll see it there. If you open it with text editor, you'll uh, you will see it there. Um, now let's go back to the uh, uh, we've had a project and uh, essentially run a synthesis and, and then implementation uh, look at the uh, timing report. Uh, so I'll just um, run it. The synthesis. Take a little while, you will see here. A message saying that uh, the design is being synthesized. As that um, is going on, you may want to take a look at this uh, sub windows here that will show you different messages as the synthesis algorithm runs under the hood. Um, that's the log window. You'll see some messages at the end. Uh, once the synthesis is done, uh, we can just continue and, and run the implementation as well. see here the same message saying that uh, the implementation run implementation is, is going on so once again uh, we created a project we added the uh, source files the VHDL source files uh, these files don't include any test bench but only the VHDL, VHDL description of the actual design entity circuit that we want to, um, to find the timing for. Uh, edit the constraints file. In this, case, in this case, the constraints file only tie input and output uh, pins of the top level design entity to actual package pins. For example, uh, well, that is still running on. It lets me, it doesn't let me do it. Then. I'll show you again. But there is a certain syntax and format that uh, we must uh, use. Right, so we can just uh, view the reports. The implementation is, is, is uh, done. Uh, let's take a look at the, the reports. Uh, you can come here and, and uh, extend and, and click on the report timing summary to generate the timing reports. As you will see here, a new uh, open uh, window with the device uh, that you may want to take a look and see what exactly inside the FPGA uh, that circuit is being implemented, but that's of uh, 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 less interest right now. My objective is to really take a look and see the timing. And because this is a, uh, a combination of circuit for which we didn't really set up any, any timing constraints, but we only uh, uh, did the synthesis and the implementation, We'll have to look at the so-called unconstrained paths from none to none, and uh, we'll see there um, that, for example, the longest path in this four-bit adder, path number one, is from uh, input pin B0 to the output carry output with a total delay of 9.749 nanoseconds. So there you go. That's uh, the simplest way to find out the longest time in critical path, the longest delay through the 4-bit adder. Um, uh, going back to the uh, constraints uh, file that we had created and um, edited with copy and paste from that uh, example constraints file that, I, as I said, I will uh, put on, on D2L, uh, it's very easy to see that uh, pretty much all the input and uh, output 
uh, ports of the top level design entity, which in our case uh, is the 4 bit adder that um, has a um, design entity declaration as shown over here, where the input and output ports are A, B. Uh, input standard logic vector 3 down to 0, the outputs are Z and K output, uh, standard logic vector 3 down to 0, and the standard logic vector, and standard logic, uh, which is the, just the K output. So the longest uh, critical path delay is between bit uh, index 0 of the input uh, B and the K output uh, that, that, that long. Uh, so this is pretty much what you'll have to do to find out the uh, timing critical. Uh, timing most critical part in uh, any of the components that I have to do in, uh, in uh, on your project. Uh, with that, I just wanted to remind you again about the additional resources that uh, that you may want to, to to go and check out for uh, for more uh, details. And with that, uh, I'll see you in the next.